all of your actual work is going to be in college algebra, in the college algebra class, and we're going to go to that in just a few minutes. But I wanted to show you the syllabus. And you see you have two things there, but they happen to be the most important. So there's the short syllabus. And it only has questions here because at the time that I wrote this, I didn't know what my office hours would be. I didn't know for sure what all of my class hours would be. And so I just put uh, question marks in there, but now I know. And I've made a new document that shows my entire schedule, and that's about to go into um, everybody's syllabus. So you can see where I am at what time. That is, if we ever go back to school. So both classes actually have a lot in common, obviously. I mean, it's not obvious, but for the sake of my sanity, both classes are graded in exactly the same way. Um, as you'll see, uh, the point counts for the quizzes and exams are the same. Uh, everything is the same just about. So let's go over the short syllabus. And I'm going to make this bigger, I think, if I can. There. OK, now this has the number specifically. For oh my goodness, I'm in college algebra, so OK. Um, I will wait a minute to go back there. Let's just stay here. Here's the syllabus for your college algebra class. Math 1203 section 1. We're going to be meeting in SC336. You have all this information. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, the 130 class, well, the college algebra class will start at 130, and the foundations class will start at 1230. The foundations class will go until 120. We take a 10 minute break, come back to 336, and then um, uh, the college algebra class goes for an hour and 15 minutes from 1.30 to 2.45. Yeah, so that's an hour and 15 minutes. The rest of this is information on how to contact me. Okay, and this part of both syllabi deal with how to contact the head people in the math department, the, administr the administrative assistant, Brenda Andrews, the two chair people, they're right there, Meredith Davis, Amber Holtz, and their email addresses and office numbers. And the person you may need most is Stephanie Rodriguez. She's the math advisor. So she can help you get into a class, get out of a class, uh, find out what classes you need to take next. Uh, find out if this is the right class for you. And she can be a very, very helpful person. So her contact info is here also. So, so far we've dealt with the technical data about college algebra. Uh, my contact information. I've said that I now have the information that will go in this box, and I even have a nice special sheet of paper with colored boxes on it that makes where I am during the day very understandable, I hope. The contact info for the head people in the math department and what to do if you're dissatisfied with the class. If you, well, first, you can always drop it and pick up a different class until the 19th, and it's the 16th right now. So you have three days to make that decision. 
But if it's something that I could change, then we should talk. You should talk to me first. If I can't clear up the situation, then you go to the the uh, uh, the chair people of the department. If they can't fix the issue, then you'll go to the dean of the division and his administrative assistant, uh, Kobe Hopkins, is here uh, and there's her email address. You'll make an appointment to meet with the dean um, uh, through her. And then you'll meet with the dean and hopefully he can fix the situation for you. If not, he'll tell you who higher up you can go to. So there is a chain you can go through if you have an issue with the class, if you have a dissatisfaction with the class. OK, here are still on page one. Here are your required uh, materials. You've got to be in Canvas. You've got to be in my math, my math lab. And the only way you get into my math lab is through Canvas. And my math lab is only going to be avail available to you through col the college algebra Canvas. We call it a shell a canvas shell. It's like a shell or a frame that holds all of the important information. Also, you need a calculator, either a scientific calculator like the TI-36X Pro, which is a very, very good scientific calculator that can take you all the way through Calculus 2, or um, the TI-84, which let me bring up a picture of it. This is the TI-84, and this is what I'll use during class and during videos that I make. This is free, and you can download it from Wabbit Emu. So let me bring up my page here, and I'll write this on the page. If you go to a w a b b i t e m u dot org, you can download a Wabbit Emu TI eighty four calculator completely free, and you never even have to return it. I've used this one for years and made lots of videos with it. So I recommend it. It'll go on your Android device and it will go on um, Android or Apple computers. But it is primarily an Android, uh, an Android, an Android tool. Um, Apple does have its own TI-84 emulator. So you can always go to their Play Store or whatever it's called and, and you can download it from there. I don't know if there's a cost. However, you can also rent from the school for only $15, one five, $15, um, a TI-84 calculator that you can use all, all um, semester, and then after the final exam, give it to me or give it to Ms. Andrews, the administrative assistant of the math department. And once you look at this syllabus, if you already have, well, you're in Canvas, so you've already got the information, what her office is, um, what her email is, and you can actually go by there. And after you've read these steps for doing it, what you do is you go to the cashier on the second floor first. You give them your $15, one five, and then they give you a receipt. You take it upstairs to the math department and you get a calculator for the semester. If you want your own calculator, I think the TI-84 is around $80. The T 
maybe more depending on where you go. And the TI-36X Pro is $20 at Amazon. Actually, most of them are 24, but there is one for $20 that I purchased. I don't know how to use it yet though. Okay, that's page one. Kind of the general information. And then page two is probably the most important page. Getting a little slug of water here. Almost all of page two deals with your grades and how they're calculated. Um, but at the very top of the page, you have recommended materials. And these are, are typical of in any school, that it's a good idea to have a three ring binder, to have pencils and pens, to have notebook paper that will fit in your three ring binder, to have graphing paper because we'll be graphing and it helps and um, three by five cards because you'll have a lot of formulas in this class and you've got to memorize them. We don't allow notes on exams. Now there's also a discussion of the NP grade and the FP grade both of those are very bad grades. If you and and it will give you details so you can read that for yourself. But if at the end of two weeks you haven't completed your homework. Uh, because that's all you'll have for the first two weeks. It, you won't have a test. Um, then you'll be removed from the class. And that's required by the federal government and the state government. So we do it. We have to do it. FP is the grade you get at the end of the semester. If you have not uh, done at least half the work, at least 51% of the work. Uh, the exact wording is a student who has not successfully completed 51% of assigned work by the last official day of the semester, which I believe is May 3rd then you get an FP. So you don't want that because that can impact your ability to get um, financial aid and it can can put you on academic. What is that? Not expulsion, but the one that comes before that. But anyway, it's not a good grade to have. You don't want it. So just do your work and you won't get it. Either of them. Now, rules for taking exams. You need to read this. You can take exam one, exam two, and exam three twice. And as you'll read here, the first attempt has to be taken in class on the correct date. And you've got an assignment calendar that tells you the correct date and your assignments in my math lab also tell you the correct date. Then if you don't like your grade, you, you can take the exam a second time if you've taken the practice exam and gotten a grade of at least 80%. You're not gonna remember any of this, but you've got it in writing right here. It's in syllabus in both classes. Now here, underneath that, you have two tables. One is for math, well, is for college algebra, and one is for foundations of college algebra. And what everything counts, and they're almost exactly alike. They are exactly alike. Okay, the homework counts altogether 10% of your, of your grade. That's a whole letter grade. The practice exams are graded and altogether they count 20% of your grade, which is one fifth of your grade. Chapter exams one, two, and three altogether 
count 45% of your grades. That's almost half of your semester grade. Individually, they count 15% each. Then you've got the required final exam. You have to take the exam, even if you've got an A, you have to take the final exam to pass. So that counts a quarter of your grade, one fourth of your grade, 25%. And you can get 2% extra credit by filling out the evaluation at the end of the semester. And then at the bottom, it explains how foundations, the foundations grades will be put into the, uh, actually, it's a week after the exams, then your grades, will be updated in, it, the foundation grades will be updated in the foundations canvas. And uh, I didn't say this in here, but it's true, that the college algebra grades will be updated in the canvas gradebook because both classes are together in the, in the uh, college algebra shell, canvas shell. So that's the short version of the syllabus. If this one has the third page, yes, it does. <clears throat> Other pages consist of stuff that's essentially very boring. The stuff that we legally have to put in there. You've got an explanation of the grading policy in foundations of college algebra. You want to read that since you are taking both. Every student in here is taking both classes. You want to pass both classes. It is possible to pass foundations, but not college algebra, and it is possible to pass college algebra and not pass foundations. So you want to pass both. It would be terrible to be in calculus too and find out to graduate, you've got to go back and retake foundations of college algebra, which is essentially the information of beginning algebra and intermediate algebra. OK, so you do want to read this. Uh, the attendance policy is separate in start here. Uh, Canvas and oh, and it tells you that Canvas is used to hold the grades of these two classes. And it's used for the links to my math lab and for the links to Microsoft Teams. Uh, but it's not, the grade book is not used for grading. It's usually for you guys, it's, you're, it's going to hold your grades and grades that have already been finalized in my math lab. Okay, and math department requirements and where to find math help. I have office hours that you're gonna see soon. Um, and the, the best place to go is to the math center which is no longer in the student center. It's over in Burns Hall, in the big computer lab, 1217 Burns Hall. And that's discussed right here. And for help with stress, um, uh, NWAC provides, if you want it, free personal counseling. Because college is very stressful. It's stressful wherever you go. And that's the syllabus. Be sure to read it for yourself. Because you won't hold on to all this information. OK. All right, then if I click on start here. All that information is already here. It was changed. It was just out like you see it now. 
And when I was looking for the documents for this class about 50, I mean, yeah, for this class, because we're in class, about 15 minutes before the class, um, it wasn't there. And it was different. But at the end, once I had stopped panicking, I realized that it was in start here. Well, what if I click on start here? There you go. Now let me show you the other buttons while we're at it. Student resources is very, very helpful. You can find a link for anything you need. Excuse me, so I'd recommend looking through it. The Oh, this is home. OK, now I'll just go backwards. No, what will I do? Don't make me leave. Good grief. All right, I'm going back to dashboard. Syllabus policies is all the rules and regs. So you might want to glance over it. Yes, it's uh, most of it's boring. However, this about the Disabilities Resource Center will help if you've ever thought you might have a disability of any kind, physical, mental, um, a learning disability, a temporary disability like a broken leg or a sprained ankle, or even being pregnant, because that's a very temporary disability that only gets worse and then very suddenly gets better. I know, I've been there. OK, so if if you have something like that. If you start having problems with your vision, go to the Disabilities Resource Center and, and they can do all sorts of things. They can do big things. They can do little things like write a note to your teacher saying, please allow this person to be late. They're having to use a wheelchair for a while and then crutches and then they'll be well. And for the most part, we have to do what they say because it's the federal government. OK, so you can find out about all the rules. Right in here, you can look through here. Find out what you're concerned about, even carrying weapons to school. That um, uh, I forget what it's called, the the. The carry law. OK, so. Now to get out of here, I have to go back to dashboard. That really sucks. I shouldn't say that, should I? There is more of interest. I'm still in college algebra spring 2024 math 1203-1 in person because we normally meet in person. I'm going to click on start here. And I'm going to point out to you the other things that are valuable to you here. For instance, here's the schedule. My schedule, it's here. I didn't remember I'm putting it here. Some classes have it, some don't. This will tell you the yellow. Well, I'm telling you the yellow is when I'm teaching classes. And here's our our two classes. Right there. Tuesday and Thursday. Um, the pink is when I'm over in the math tutoring center which is in what's called the Learning Commons. And my flex time is actually office hours, when I'm usually in my office and you can come by for help or to talk to me about something. I can help you in the math center, of course. But if you wanted to speak to me, probably alone, you would want to come to my flex time. So be sure to print this out for yourself so you can carry it around. Put it in your three ring notebook. OK, now here is 
I don't know. It's easily as important as your syllabus. College algebra with foundations. Oh, that's the college algebra with foundations. That's you. You the foundations with college algebra is the other class, but you're the college algebra class and you've also got foundations. Here is your weekly class. Now inside, inside here says what days we're actually going to cover information. We're going to cover homework. This tells you what week. This tells you what days. Now today we're going to cover these first three items that all say January 16. And then on the 18th Thursday, we're going to cover these items. OK, now on the 16th. Yeah, on the 18th, everything is together for the for the for the 16th, because after all, we're covering two things. We're covering the syllabus. And we're covering information about the class, and then we're actually covering homework also. But here we go. Here's what we're going to be covering. On the 16th and the 18th, and then the days due. January 21st. By 11.59 PM, you have to have the work done in my math lab. If you can't remember where you are on what day, this will help you. But as you'll see in just a minute, when you go to college, when you go to college algebra in my math lab, that assignment schedule is actually what this is a copy of. So even if, I don't know, even if this were to disappear, you would still have my math lab. It's kind of nice, isn't it? OK, back up. Here are the instructions right here. For getting into my math lab. And what they're going to tell you is go here to inclusive access. So here are the instructions. This is what they look like. OK, this used to be a different name. Now it's called inclusive access, so I had to white it out. But this will take you step by step. Through what you need to do. To register in my math lab. You have to register inside Canvas, inside the Inclusive Access link. And then you will automatically have the homework and the practice exams and the exams for both classes. So what we're going to do is Back up here and let me show you the rest of the documents for you to look through. When you make your second attempts at uh, at exams, at the first three exams, if you want to, you don't have to. If you're happy with your first grade, you don't need to take it again. But most people want to. So you're going to do that in the testing center. And so here's how to make an, an uh, an appointment in the testing center. Though the easiest way is just to go by there and have them show you how to do it if you don't know how. Um, this is the, the long version of the NWAC attendance policy. Here's our inclement weather policy. Again, the long version. But it says what we're doing now. When school is snowed out or some other bad, unexpected event happens and the school can't be open, we will meet online. Like we're doing now. Same place.
OK, here's our proctor testing um, um, statement, official statement. Um, that's for online students. Uh, the final exam schedule. This is here for all your classes. All your Monday, Wednesday classes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes, and Tuesday, Thursday classes, and night classes. You can find when all your final exams are going to be. I thought that would be helpful. And then the spring important dates. These are already on your weekly schedule, but here they are just themselves. So you'll always know when the important dates are. And then down here at the bottom, we have our class meeting link. You obviously already know where that is because you're here, unless, unless you, uh, you got the link from the email. Now, let me take you over here and show you this. Ah, but I've got to go to home first. This is home where start here is. I wish they hadn't changed it, but I can get used to it. And I went ahead and put the meeting link out here before I knew it was already in there. Um, I am going, going to click on. I'm so irritated by this. I had everything perfect, perfect. Oh, well. You see something different, a little bit different. That is, you have a shorter list here. And you don't see this over here. There's it. There it is. They've changed it. It used to be over here. OK, I'm going to go to student view. This is what you see. Home puts you right here. Syllabus. Well, you've got those up. The rest of these will be up. You've got inclusive access. We're about to go there. You've got announcements. And I've already put up um, this announcement. NWAC closed tomorrow, but now it's today. Tuesday, January 16th. Brain Fuse Online Tutoring. I know this is a private company, but NWAC students are offered a certain number of hours free. So you might check that out. The Math Center will always also, not always, also have um, evening tutoring um, online. I don't know when yet though, I don't have that schedule. We may or may not have a discussion in this class after the second week. Usually I don't though, so that will probably go away. Grades are where you're going to see your college algebra grades. I mean, you don't see it yet, but you're gonna see your college algebra grades in here. And in a minute, we're gonna go over to the foundations class and look and check that out. You're gonna have modules. This is a module. This is a module. You're going to have a module for each week with my notes in it and sometimes with my videos in it. And then quickly attendance is where I'll take attendance when we're in class. As it is, the video will have your attendance today, so I don't have to ask. Now I'm going to go to dashboard. No, not when I'm in student view. I'm going to go to dashboard. Here it is. I'm going to go over to FC. Well, I have it labeled as FCA, but it's math zero. Actually, this should be 122-1, but that's your foundation class. Oh, it's 112. I don't think it is, but I'll make sure about that. Anyway, if I go to student view, 
Notice that you see the same things. Except there's a note here that says. Well, let me go into it. See foundations of college algebra. And there's your syllabus. Which you'll notice is exactly like or almost exactly like the other syllabus, except the hours are different. The classroom's the same, but the hours are different because foundations meets 1230 to 120. But all the rest of the information is the same. There's a little explanation about Students aren't going to do any work in this Canvas shell. Otherwise, you'd have to pay for it. And so there. I had a possum in our house last night, too. That was a. a and the night before. That was a little surprising. It just came in through the cat door. Now I have possum poop in one of the rooms. How delightful. But I'm going to take care of that after our classes. I can be a very interesting person. Not many people have possum poop. Okay. So let's go back to college algebra. And I'm going to get this. And I'm going to get instructions for registering in my math lab. And what it will tell you is to go here to inclusive access and click on inclusive access. And then it will tell you to launch courseware. Because I'm the teacher, even if I were in student view, you would see this top instructor tools. But when you go in, you'll only see the bottoms. But when you go in to register, it's this gold button right here that you're going to click on. Now, you're not going to see this. Instead, you'll see um, what the handout says you'll see until you get registered. Then what you want to do, the best thing for you to do is to click on one of these two links. This top link, link My Lab Math, all assignments will give you what you might never expect, all assignments. So here's your homework. And here is your practice exam one for foundations, your practice exam one for college algebra, your exam one for foundations, and your exam one for college algebra. And you keep going down and you've got your homework. And you'll see the word foundations after your homework for foundations. And you'll see the letter CA for college algebra um, for the homework for college algebra. And you're going to do all of it. All right, so everything you need to do is here. The only thing is, I don't believe you can get into the final exam. Oh, maybe you could. I have to unshare those, but the rest of it's going to be open. The practice exams are ready. You could start on those. In fact, you could go through as fast as you want and do both classes, get them all done, and then as soon as it's eight weeks in, people can take the final exams early. I don't recommend it, but you could do it. 
I uh, and that would be pretty good. You'd have a lot of spare time. But I don't recommend it Nah. But yeah, it might work for you. It all depends on the individual. OK, but anyway, let's go go to a homework assignment, any homework assignment. We can go to algebraic expressions for foundations. Oh, well, why don't we go to your first homework assignment? January 16 review of variables foundations. And here's your page. Now what students see is that all of this is in there together. But these over here are, let's see, this first line will give you the PowerPoints for this section, R4, and this will give you the textbook for R4, and this will give you the objective one um, video for this part of R4, which is translating algebraic expressions into words. And then the object two video gives you the videos for gives you a video for evaluating an algebraic expression. As you can see, you only have eight problems here, most of which, if not all of which, you already know. You could probably get it done in less than half an hour. What was that? Never mind. OK, so that is my math lab. The homeworks will all look very similar to this. They'll have some videos. They'll have PowerPoints. They'll have um, uh, textbooks. But let's go to question one. And this is a multiple choice question. There are some, but not a lot of multiple choice questions. And what I really want to talk to you about is how do you get help when you're doing your homework? Well, my math lab has tons of help for you. Not only what I just showed you, where you've got the PowerPoints, for instance, and you've got the textbook, but you have view an example down here at the bottom. View an example. And this will take you step by step through a problem just like the problem that you're wondering how to work. OK, you go go through it step by step. It explains step by step. And then you can work this. You've got three chances to get it right. And then my math lab will change the question a little bit. It'll be the same question, but different numbers. Sometimes, sometimes you're going to luck out. And the numbers in view and example will end up being the same as the numbers in the real problem. So it's like you've gotten told how to use it. That's a freebie. You don't often see that. OK, now you've also got textbook. And the great thing about this textbook is that, and when you see problems like this, all you have to do is scroll down. This is R4, but it's only going to be for the section of R4 that this problem is in. I recommend glancing through it. You don't have to read it. You don't have to understand it. Yes, math books can be a little boring, but it can also help explain the kinds of work you're going to be doing in this section. What we're going to be doing is translating. OK, and in fact, example two 
And example three are problems just like the problems in the homework. So looking at the example problems can be very helpful. Because of, because I'm in the teacher part, okay? I'm in the teacher part of where we are. Oh, oh my gosh, it's working now. It wasn't working before. This is great. Okay, suppose none of the helps help you. S suppose you've got a really hard problem and you can't find any help that makes sense. You can email me directly by going to Ask My Instructor. It's already set up to go directly to my school email. And there's a link, they provide a link to the very same problem you're having trouble with. Like that, well, okay, keeps bouncing back. But the problem you're trying to do, it'll have a link to that problem with those numbers. So all you have to do is write, this is the worst problem in the world. Help. I got carried away. All right, so that's that's <laughs> that's Czechoslovakian, I think, or Russian. After you're through telling me what the problem is, all you have to do is hit send. And it will go directly to my email. Which lets me look at the actual problem. That way I can give you the actual help you need. Very convenient. And a very popular help with students is Skill Builder. What Skill Builder does is it takes you back to the past, to problems that you learned in earlier, well, to math that you learned in earlier classes that you have to know to be able to work the problem you're working on. So inside the math problem, you have a lot of help. Also, if we go through this, here, you'll see, here's objective two, the objective two video. All you have to do is click on it to watch it. To watch it. There. There you click there. You don't really want to watch it yet, but you could. OK, do I want to save it? You could save it, but I'm not doing it for a grade. So let us continue. I want to show you something else first. If we go back here, and here are your two links, but you've got more, it says, Pearson announcements. Okay, not exciting. But these two, these two links will do everything for you. If instead of uh, doing the assignments right away, you want to look at the rest of the course, Come here to Course Home, My Lab and Mastering Course Home. Oops, it's 1.22. We're two minutes late from our break between classes. So let me just show you this real fast. You've got a whole lot of cool stuff here. If you go to Multimedia Library, you can pick any chapter any section, and then you can look at all of the helps, all of the helps just for that section.
OK. Now, if we were not in class, we could take a break. I mean, it, if you want it, you're at home probably or somewhere else where there's a restroom or a bathroom. If you want to take a quick break, if you want to get some more coffee, that's an idea. I will give us a break. I'll do the selfish thing and heat up my coffee and I'll be right back. So you take a break too. <laughs> 